Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. You might notice my background is different in this video. On Friday I moved house, uh, so I'm now kind of well, in a different spot. This is my living room. Uh, got the sofa and the guitars, there's a mic stand over there. I've just been recording some stuff for my music channel. Plug, plug, plug. Cause I know I don't belong here in heaven. So it's been a very hectic weekend. I've been uh, obviously moving all of this stuff from one place to another, which took absolutely ages. But it's Sunday evening now and I'm up and running again, finally. So today's video is how I did the Wolverine Claws effect. So the first step, as you could probably expect, is to bring in the footage into Blender. So I'm going to go into the Movie Clip Editor and open up the JPEG sequence from Nuke. Hit Set Scene Frames and Prefetch, which will load it into the RAM. And then basically what I'm going to be doing here is object tracking my hands. And I'm not going to do a proper object track, I'm just going to do one point. And I put some tape on both of my hands so I could track them very easily. I'm going to turn on Normalize and turn up the pattern sizes slightly to something like 40 and 100. Change this to a fine. I'm going to press N to open up this menu on the side, go to track and then under objects where it says camera, just press the plus button and it will add an object track. Then very simply, I'm going to hold control and click, which will add a tracking point. And I'm just going to track this dot on my hand, basically. So control shift T to track backwards. It gets a bit lost there, but that's before the claws will come out anyway. And then let's go forward and track forward with control T gets to about here. And then I guess we just have to probably do a little bit of hand tracking. There's some frames where it's just so motion blurred and moving so quickly that it's impossible to do a decent track. So I'm just going through frame by frame and just kind of tracking to the best of my ability with my eyes. At this point here, I kind of form a fist with my hand and it creates this kind of point of contrast where the shadows are on the inside of my fingers. So I'm going to use that as a new tracking point to try and help the track a little bit. I'm just doing a combination of kind of stepping through and tracking manually. And then if there's bits of contrast on the hand, I'll select those for a bit and track them. Once this one goes out the frame, a couple of frames ahead, don't need to worry about it anymore, so probably about here. I'll just stop tracking that one. And then at the point where the claws need to come out, I'll add another tracking point on this hand, scale it down a little bit, Control T to track forward. And then at this point, I'm walking out the frame. So let's clear the points forward after that. And that is our tracking done. Now what I'm gonna do is turn these two tracks into empties, and then I'll have a location for each of the hands in 3D space, which will be really handy for tracking the claws on. So I'm gonna open up the 3D viewport. I'm gonna add a camera and then just kind of move it up a little bit so it's not on the floor. Then I'm gonna select one of the tracking points, go to the solve tab, and then under geometry, I'm gonna click link empty to track. And that is gonna create this empty in 3D space, which is linked to the camera. And if I go into the camera view, just scale this down a bit, we can bring in our background footage in the camera. So there we go, that's in the background now. And you can see that this empty is sticking nicely to the hand. So I'm gonna name this uh, right hand track. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the other side. So select it, link empty to track, just make it smaller so it's about that sort of size. And then rename this to left hand track. Then at this point in the last video, like I showed, I actually modeled the Wolverine claws. I'm not gonna model them again in this video. They're pretty simple to make, so I'm just gonna bring them in from the last one. But if you're interested, then the uh, project files of that are available on my Patreon for a dollar, so you can get the model of the claws. So this is the model that I made. It's very simple, it's just obviously the three claws. And then I also took a 3D model of a person, just cut it off at the hand, and then kind of closed it into a fist. And this is used as a holdout so that the claws kind of disappear when they go into the hand. I just took the claw model and obviously duplicated it at the two times and moved it into position. And then I parented those claws to the bone, which is uh, the rig for the hand. So obviously to do that, select all three of the claws and then select the armature, press control P and parent to bone. And then it will stick to the hand and move wherever the hand moves. And then to animate them coming out, I used a driver. So what I did is I created two shape keys. For this example, I'm just gonna do it on one. So select the object, go to the shape keys menu, and then press add, which will add the base pose. This is gonna be called out. And then we want to add a second one. And this is gonna be called in, which is gonna be when the claws go into the hand. Then we wanna set the value to one, which means whatever we do in a moment is gonna be the pose for the in when the slider is at one. And then once that's done, go into edit mode, select the claw and press G. And then basically we're just gonna retract it into the hand, something like this. And if you go into wireframe mode, you can kind of line it up so that the point is kind of coming out in the right direction. And then if I slide this, you can see that the claws now come out. And then just to make the animation a little bit easier, as you saw in the last video, I created a slider to do it. That's also really simple. So first of all, add a plane, rotate it by 90 degrees in the x-axis. I'm gonna go into edit mode and delete the face. So it's just the vertices. And then I'm gonna scale it down in the x-axis till it's more of a rectangle. And then I'm gonna move it up so that the origin point is at the bottom. And then I'm gonna add an empty and I'm gonna use a circle for this. 
and then just scale it down until it fits in here nicely. Then what we want to do is constrain this circle so that it can't move outside of this box that we've created. So first of all, I'm gonna limit the locations on the X and Y so it can only move in the Z axis. And you can see now if I hit G, move my cursor around, it can only go up and down. But it can still go outside of the box. So what we want to do is add a constraint onto this that's called limit location. And then you can set the minimum and maximum amounts it can move in each axis. So in this case, we want to do the Z axis. We want the minimum to be zero because that's where it is now. And then we want the max to be one, I believe. So let's try that. Yep, one. So as you can see, once it hits the ceiling, it can't go any further. I'm just gonna rename these. So I'm gonna call this circle claw control. And I'm gonna call the box claw domain. And then I'm gonna select the control and then select the box with shift and press control P and parent the circle to the box. And now wherever I move the box, this will move as well. You can see at the moment, if I move the box too low, then the circle gets stuck at the origin of the world. So what we want to do is change the owner space to local in the constraint. And that means wherever you move the box, the bottom of it is still the zero location for the circle. So now we have that, the next step is to set a driver on the shape key so that we can control it by moving this up and down. So if we select the claw again, go to the shape keys menu, on the value, right click and go to add driver. And then what we want to do is set the object to be the claw control. So you can just search for it here, claw control. The type is gonna be Z location because it's moving up and down. So Z location. And then the space is gonna be local space because it wants to be based on the circle zone's coordinates. And now if I move the circle up and down, you can see it can retract the claw, which is exactly what we want. Then all you have to do is select this and press shift D to duplicate it a couple of times, move them into position, and then all three of them do the same thing. So now that's that working, I'm gonna just kind of put this off screen so I have the control of it, but it's not gonna be in the way. And then we're gonna line this up with the hand. I'm just gonna go into wireframe mode so I can see a little bit better. Something like that looks pretty good. Ignore the thumb, that's just doing its own thing, but the fingers are in the correct position. I'm moving everything using the bone, by the way, that's because everything's parented to it. So don't try and move the uh, actual hand, otherwise it'll break everything. So then we want the bone to stick to the empty track. So what we're gonna do is add a constraint onto the hand bone. So go to the bone constraints tab and we're gonna add a child of constraint. This is basically the bone version of parenting, but this allows you to parent bones to objects outside of the armature. So what we're gonna do is set the target to be the left hand track. And now if I move through the timeline, you can see the 3D model of the hand is roughly moving with the empty. Obviously it's not quite perfect at the moment because this is only a one point track. So we don't have any rotation or depth information. This is just kind of moving around in basically in 2D, but in 3D space. So now comes the slightly fiddly part where you have to do some manual keyframing to rotate this into position as it moves throughout the scene. So so what I did for this is come down to the keying menu and turn on location and rotation. And then what this means is whenever you hit I, it will add a keyframe for both of those. So we're adding a location and rotation keyframe. And then I basically just go through and look for areas where it needs to be in a slightly different place, move it and then hit I again. Bit of a slow process, it took me about 20 minutes to do it for the actual video, but it's pretty straightforward. Basically, whenever you see it start to move off slightly, you just need to rotate it back into place. Okay, I've done it a little bit. This is quite rough compared to last time just because this is the tutorial. So once that feels like it's sticking nicely, all you really have to do is do the animation now. So we go to the point where the claws are meant to come out, which is about here. All you have to do is grab the circle that's just off screen, hit I to add a location keyframe, and then scrub a few frames forward where the claws are meant to be out, and move the circle down. And as you can see, the claws come out. Then we hit I again to add a second keyframe. And now the slider is animating the claws coming out of the hand. And then the final step for this really is just setting up the holdout. So when you're doing the render, you basically want to set this hand object to be a holdout so it cuts out the claws when they go inside of it. I've got the claws in their own collection already. So what I'm gonna do is now select the hand mesh and I'm gonna press M and hit new collection and just call it hand holdout. Then on the hand holdout collection up here, I'm gonna right click and go to view layer and set holdout. And if we go into rendered view now, you can see the hand is invisible, but where the geometry is intersecting with the claws, it's actually cutting it out here. And if I go a little bit earlier on, you can see as the claws retract into the hand, they fully disappear. So it looks like they're coming out my knuckles because they're actually retracting into the 3D geometry. So when I rendered them, I just rendered each of them on their own onto a transparent background, obviously, and then just overlaid them onto the footage of me in Nuke. I did a quick track on each of my hands to remove the bits of tape, and that was the whole video. And just to remind you, this is what the final effect looks like. So there we go, that's how I did the Wolverine Claws. It's actually a pretty straightforward effect. A little bit of tracking, a little bit of animation, a bit of compositing at the end and it's all done. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you very soon.